Hey everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Today we're going to talk about the topic, Does Mozart Make You Smarter? The year was 1994. I had just sat down for breakfast in Los Angeles, and there on the front page was, Mozart Makes You Smarter as one of the headlines. And of course, that definitely piqued my interest because by that time I had done a lot of research uh, about, about music and how it helped the brain. So I read the study and it was very interesting. Most people read the first paragraph of the study and then didn't read the at rest because then everyone ran out and started getting Mozart and playing Mozart hoping to, to gain a few IQ points. But this is how it went. The study was done at the University of California at Irvine by two doctors, Dr. Gordon Shaw and Dr. Francis Rauscher. Okay, they were scientists. And what they had done is that they had uh, they were studying a particular kind of intelligence. Most people thought, well, if we play Mozart, we'll just up our IQ. But they were not talking about general intelligence. They were talking about specific intelligence. And they had been studying, actually, that when a person does a spatial task, and we talked about spatial intelligence earlier on other um, episodes, but spatial intelligence is being able to see pictures in your mind. It's definitely related to higher forms of math and science. It's definitely related to the, the type of intelligence that is, is the type of intelligence that we need for the 21st century. People who can solve problems, people who are spatial, can really have the ability to solve a lot of complex problems. So they were looking at how the different um, d different things that were happening in the brain when somebody does a spatial task, like a cutting or folding task, or like putting together a puzzle. And they noticed that the neurons, as they fired, they were forming patterns. And as they formed all of these patterns, as they looked at it, it looked like music. And so they said, if we played a piece of music that had a similar structure to these firings that we see going on with the neurons, would it increase the person's ability to do the spatial task? And that's what it was. So what they did is they brought in college students. They divided them into three groups. They had the control group. They sat there for 10 minutes and did nothing. Then they put together a, uh, it was a cutting and folding task, you know, like a puzzle. The next group, they listened to Philip Glass's music, which is New Age type music. Then they did the cutting and folding task. Then the third group, they listened to Mozart's Piano Sonata in D for four pianos for 10 minutes. Then they did the task. Nothing happened with the first two groups, but that third group that listened to Mozart, their IQ rose eight to 10 points in 10 minutes. Now, it was a temporary effect, but what do you expect for 10 minutes, right? But it was really powerful and it was like, okay, it would increase their spatial intelligence. And so uh, Dr. Rauscher and Dr. Shaw said, okay, wait a second, this was temporary. But what about if we gave people music lessons? Because we know that playing music is a spa spatial task. It develops spatial intelligence. What if we gave them the music? Would this increase significantly their spatial intelligences? So what they decided to do is they went into a preschool because between the ages of three and seven, the cortex of the brain is rapidly growing. So this would be the perfect time. So they had a little keyboard in there, and the kids, once a week, had a 10-minute lesson. That was it, and it was very casual. The rest of the week, they had the keyboard there. If they wanted to go over and play on it, they could. If they didn't want to, they didn't have to. But within eight months, they tested those kids, and just having that 10-minute lesson a week, their uh, spatial IQ rose 48 points. That's pretty significant. Okay, so then they went to four-year-olds, and five-year-olds, and six-year-olds, and seven-year-olds, and what they found is that the spatial intelligence rose up to 125%. Now, what does this have to do with the world? Well, the world is becoming a more complex place. We need people who are spatial, who can pro problem solve things in their mind, who can see the problem in their mind. That was the brain of Albert Einstein, as I've mentioned before. He was a spatial genius. We need some of those in our day and age. In fact, the people who do exceptionally well are ones who can see things in their mind. Uh, definitely, they're more creative, and so the bottom line is get your kids involved in music lessons. Now, you can start them as young as 18 months of age. There's numbers of blogs that I've talked about about different music programs you can go into, and you can read about those different music programs. Some of them really focus on visual, some of them spatial, some of them motor, some of them... Um, auditory, some of them a whole combination. But when your child is learning a musical instrument, their spatial IQ is going to increase. So 
The bottom line is, get them involved in music as soon as you can. Get them listening to music from utero on. By 18 months of age, have them in a little uh, group program. And usually, by the time they're five or six, if they've been in these group programs, they can actually go into private lessons. Let me leave you with one of my very favorite quotes that you'll find in my book, Good Music, Brighter Children. This is by um, Walter Damrosch, and he wrote this in 1928. Servant and master am I, servant of those dead and master of those living. Though my spirit, through my spirit, immortals speak the message that makes the world weep and laugh and wonder and worship. I am the instrument of God. I am music. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you tomorrow.